In the Epic Times, there's an article labeled high blood sugar is no good for your brain. Now, we know that sugar pretty much deteriorates the body. It causes your body just to break down at a rapid level, and that's why we know sugar is so dangerous. Sugar is so dangerous be, not only because it wrecks your body, but also because how addictive it is. It's you know just as addictive as cocaine. And so what we have to do is we have to make sure that uh, we take this very seriously because we're about to explore what it can do to your brain. And then at the end of this, we'll talk about some natural ways that you can you know work to na uh, support brain health and um, of course, lower your blood sugar as well. When you hear about high blood sugar, what comes to mind? The risk of diabetes, of course, weight gain, and the risk of poor heart health. But what about your brain? And this is what a lot of people don't think about. High blood sugar, even below diabetes level, may boost the risk of dementia. There's a new study in the University College London in the United Kingdom found that pre-diabetes, a condition where your blood sugar levels are high, but not as high as full-blown diabetes may threaten brain health. The research was published in the journal Diabetes, Obesity, and Metabolism. Looking at the data from the UK Biobank on a half a million people between the ages of 40 and 69, researchers found people with prediabetes had a 42% higher risk of de mental decline over four years than people with normal blood sugar. So we're seeing how dangerous blood sugar really is. And in the, on average, in America, people consume over 125 pounds of sugar per year. If you think about that, that is insane. If you go grab like, let's say five pound bags of sugar and just stack them up and look at how much sugar that actually is, it literally is mind blowing. And the fact is, is that most people look at it and they go, no, not me, I don't do that. But reality is that most of us don't understand how much sugar is in very common foods, even health foods that we eat every day. So it's something we have to take very seriously. They were 54% more likely to develop vascular dementia, a common type of dementia resulting from reduced blood flow to the brain or eight over eight years, researchers, researchers found no association with Alzheimer's risk. So this is pretty crazy because when the team examined people with full-blown type 2 diabetes, they were three times more likely to develop vascular dementia and more likely to get Alzheimer's than people who had normal blood sugar. You see the dangers in this sugar. You know, when you're eating all these cakes and cookies and ice creams and, you know, just thinking, oh, you know, it's not a big deal. Drinking those sodas with all the empty calories and just loaded with sugar. I mean, this stuff is is just wrecking your body. And they go on to say it's easy to compartmentalize health and overlook how interconnected your entire body is. The blood sugar to the brain connection is quite strong. I mean, you have to think of it too. Like people who are addicted to sugar, they can't even focus throughout the day. Their brain has major highs and lows. They can go into highs where they're having like just almost like a, a, a brain that's panicking and anxiety and things along those na that nature. And then they can go into lows where they literally can't even focus because their brain is so checked out. And so it's something that most people are experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, how many people eat a meal and they require sugar after it because that's the only way that they can you know, feel good, right? That's a sign of diabetes. How many people get sleepy after a meal? That's a sign that you could potentially have some diabetes issues. So, I mean, there's so many different signs out there. And of course, like I mentioned, people just having severe brain fog throughout the day after they uh, have uh, their blood sugar start to lower because it's crashing just because it has no stability. When blood sugar is high, it can lead to inflammation and arterial blockage over time. This can lead to reduced blood flow to the brain, which is associated with dementia. You might be... we. You might be able to limit the risk of dementia by regulating blood sugar levels, a diet low in processed and refined sugars, they go on to say, including sugary snacks and beverages, the best place to start regular exercise can help too. Okay, so we want, of course, want to do regular exercise. Some of the best exercise that you can do in order to lower your blood sugar is going to be HIIT training. Um, what I'll do is I'll put some resources down in the uh, description below there because I actually did a video on my other YouTube channel where I talk about HIIT training being very important for lowering your blood sugar and how sometimes I'll just have, you know, some of my um, patients I'm working with who have insulin resistance, I'll have them do, you know, two to five minutes of HIIT training in the morning, uh, you know, to the point where they're not necessarily breaking a sweat and they have to jump in the shower every time. But, you know, get that, that big, powerful, 
hit exercise in because it drastically brings down your blood sugar and then even have them do it later on in the evening. And so sometimes I've had people do it up to three times a day because we're very, very determined to help people overcome these issues with insulin resistance and high blood sugar and doing it naturally. And this can be a powerful tool. So of course the exercise hit training specifically is very powerful. And like I said, not necessarily going for like a 20 minute hit exercise all at once, but just sprinkling it in throughout the day can be really great. I also want to take a look real quick at, um, a 2016 study, because there's a 2016 study that looked at um, this whole issue that we're discussing. And what they found is that you are 60% more likely to develop Alzheimer's and dementia if you have type 2 diabetes. So this is also very dangerous. Okay, so of course we want to make sure we're bringing our blood sugar down naturally at all costs. It all starts with diet, okay? I mean, your diet is going to be the sharpest tool that you have in your toolbox in order to conquer this issue. So we want to make sure that we're focused on bringing our diet down, it's our, our sugar down through diet. It's very important. So look to a sugar-free, grain-free diet. That's, you know, to, to sum it up, that's one of the most important things you can do. Following a moderate keto diet is going to be very sustainable and also very good long-term. Now, there's some other things that we can do too, because a lot of people who have high blood sugar, they automatically assume that they have to go to medication in order to conquer this issue. But the fact is, is that there's a lot of things that you can do nutritionally that works very well. And one of them is going to be berberine. A lot of people don't know this, but berberine literally hangs right there next to metformin when it comes to bringing down your blood sugar. Now, uh, of course, berberine doesn't get all the um, you know, positive press because it's a natural supplement versus something synthetically made in a lab. There's a lot more money to be made on that synthetic lab made prescription drug, um, but berberine is incredibly powerful. We use a mixture of berberine with um, alpha lipoic acid, which is going to kind of combat that inflammatory part of it, which is very important because when you look at people who have Alzheimer's and dementia, there is an inflammatory component to it. So we want to make sure that we're bringing that down um, and bringing it down naturally. Okay. Now there's some other herbs that you can utilize as well. Um, I'll use like the, a blood glucose balance kit that I call it. And it's got um, just full blood sugar support from any, every angle. It uses all kinds of natural herbs and vitamins. You know, not only do we look at the berberine, but there's also like fenugreek and there's um, many things that we can do, bitter melon uh, seed extract. So we look to all the these different herbs in order to bring it down. Now, some people can do this alone with diet and exercise, and some people need the actual supplement vitamin component to this in order to have success with it. Because there's something called type 3 diabetes. We've all heard of type 2 diabetes, but what is type 3 diabetes? Well, type 3 diabetes is exactly what we're talking about right here. This is when your blood sugar is basically so high that it deteriorates the brain. So we think of type 3 diabetes as a, as a deterioration um, in diabetes of the brain itself once again, leading to Alzheimer's and dementia. So as we look at this high blood sugar problem, we have to bring it down at all costs because our brain health and our mental health literally depends on it.